Hi everyone, my name is James. Welcome to King's Fine Woodworking. Uh, you're watching part of our 16 week uh, Woodworking 101 class. It's uh, 16 weeks of lessons on all of the basics that you need to become a woodworker. Uh, for lesson number one, we have decided to break that up into eight small subsections because there's going through all of the tools that are needed for uh, the woodworker and kind of getting the highlights of each one is a little bit tedious. So I just thought I'd break it up into eight small sections. So this is just the next section uh, in, that, uh, in that lesson number one. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Okay, do I have any boogers? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay that's good. All right, so, uh, okay, now that we're done talking about the power tools, I wanna talk a little bit about hand tools. Uh, so I am a power tool woodworker. I, I'm not a hand tool woodworker. I don't uh, do a lot of stuff by hand, uh, but just the same, no matter what you build, if you wanna be a competent woodworker, you have to be familiar with some hand tools. There's no way to, to do a good job today and strictly use power tools. So I'm gonna go over just the essentials that, uh, that eventually you'll need to have uh, in your arsenal of tools in order to uh, uh, get some good woodworking projects going. Um, I guess let me start here with these with rasps. So rasps are a way to shape wood. So if we were shaping a corner, uh, doing a round over, or um, or if you have to, you're making a curve like a curved arm for a chair, something like that. Uh, these are very good tools for that, and they they make rasps um, in a considerable number of price ranges. I've seen rasps for 150, 200 dollars a piece. I've never bought one. I've never had the need for it. I do use rasps pretty frequently, and as this uh, course continues, you'll see that we'll use some of these. I, I didn't pay more than a buck or two for each of these guys here. Um, we've got different shapes that are round to get in some tight uh, inside corners, and we've got flat shapes to keep it flat, and we've, we have also some gentle curves to follow some gentle curves. Uh, so this is kind of like sandpaper. It's just very rough, and we would just use this to shape the wood in the same way we would uh, with sandpaper. We'd have to follow up with sandpaper because it'd be very rough after a rasp cut. So that those are rasps. After rasps, um, a lot of times we'll have to hand cut things. So maybe we're putting together a uh, screwing two pieces of wood together and we have a, uh, a plug that fills a screw hole and we want to cut the top of the plug off. You'll need a saw. And what I, I use for that is just uh, multi-purpose. Uh, this is a Japanese pull saw and it's got a back on it. This one's called a dozuki. Uh, you can get these all different sizes and shapes. This is kind of a general purpose one. I can flush cut uh, dowels off with it. I can cut dovetails with it. It's a fantastic dovetail saw. Uh, I can cut boards in half with it also if I need a very fine cut. It has a very extremely thin kerf. And so I recommend something like this. Uh, you can also find these in a big variety of price ranges. Uh, a good high quality one, maybe in the $50 range. But I see them on sale all the time for half that, you know, $25. And, and you can get them even cheaper than that. I, I like to keep the cover on the ends of these because the teeth can get damaged pretty easily. Uh, so that's that saw. And so sometimes you'll need a coping saw. Sometimes there are projects where you've got to cut out a curve and maybe you don't even have a jigsaw and you don't have a bandsaw. The coping saw will allow you to do that. You can put the coping blade in here and you can just, you can cut curves with this pretty nicely. So. A coping saw like this, maybe five to ten dollars from a big box store. So that's a, a good tool to have as well. Okay, so another thing you're going to have to have at some point in your woodworking career are ch are chisels. Uh, I started out with just really cheap chisels. Uh, since I'm not a uh, a hand tool woodworker, I didn't you know I, for many years I've been woodworking for th over thirty years, but I never knew much about chisels. So I just got a reasonable set, and you can see these are pretty rusty now. I don't use these guys anymore. Uh, maybe $15 or $20 from, from a big box store. And I just kept these things sharp. I used, uh, I used my grinder, and I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to teach you how to sharpen these because there are many good woodworkers on YouTube who are experts at how to sharpen these things. Uh, so I would recommend you go see some of their channels. Like maybe I'll put a link in the description to one of Rob Cosman's videos, and he shows you how to sharpen chisels. But you don't have to have an expensive set of chisels. I have turned out very nice furniture with these things, probably furniture in in the $15,000 range uh, per piece. Uh, after a while, you know, I, I moved up just a little bit in chisels when I hand me those. 
And this is still just an intermediate or a low end uh, set of chisels. This is a Wood River set. I think it's around 60 or $80. Uh, so you could start with a set like this, or you could just go buy one or two cheaper chisels. It, you know, you don't have to get anything expensive. Um, these, you know, I like to keep the edges protected. And these, I learned how to sharpen a few years ago. And, uh, and we just keep these razor sharp. These are great for cleaning out mortises. So you're going to have to have a chisel, whether you have a, a cheaper one or a little bit more expensive one, uh, and maybe even a couple of sizes, a uh, quarter inch, three eighths, half, or um, this is like a full set. This goes from quarter inch all the way up to one inch. So that's an option there. That's a good set of chisels. Put that back over there for me. So another thing that's important is a woodworking mallet. A woodworking mallet is something you can build. Uh, there are lots of plans. I have a, a, a plan online for these things as well. Uh, this is kind of our, our little trademark piece, our Thor's hammer uh, woodworking mallet. This, this head is lignum vitae, but it doesn't have to be. You can make it oak. You can do this out of any hardwood that you want. There's hundreds of mallet designs out there. So I would uh, recommend you go out and, and look. You could, it's a great project you can make on your own. Uh, maybe we'll make one during this course here. Uh, but I, I use mallets of different sizes. So if I'm really trying to move some uh, pieces together that are stuck, I'll use something heavy like this guy. If I am chiseling, for example, then this is a mid-sized mallet is great for chisel work. So I, I use that. And then finally, if I'm going to set the, the blade on my hand planes, I'll use a smaller mallet like this. And these are all mallets that, that uh, we made, and you can do the same. You can make these guys as well. And lastly, I'm going to talk about hand planes. Let me set these over here. So <clears throat> a hand plane is probably not as important as these other tools, uh, but sometimes you need to just take a little bit off of a surface or an edge and you don't, uh, you don't have a jointer, you don't have the ability to do it easily, maybe it's a lot of sanding. So I would recommend getting a block plane, a small plane like this. This will allow you to, uh, to clean up little areas like that. And if you want to experiment uh, by doing some bigger plane work, if you look online, I have a woodworking bench that I built. Yes, I call it the Extreme uh, Rubo Woodworking Bench, and I made it out of lumber that came from uh, Home Depot, a big box door, and uh, it was all two by sixes. And after I joined the boards together, then I had to plane them flat. You know, and part of it ended up being too wide for my planer, and so for that reason, I have a low angle jack plane. And that's a really good practice project. If you do ever decide to build a workbench and you're joining a bunch of big blocks of lumber together, you can practice planing them flat with this. This is probably the most common hand plane uh, that we would use in, in the style of woodworking that I do. Um, if you look around, every woodworker will tell you probably something different, but I think most woodworkers would agree that a low angle jack plane is a, a great uh, first purchase hand plane. And I'm also not gonna go into any sharpening, uh, how, you, how to sharpen uh, the blades on hand planes. There's a lot of really good videos out there with people showing you how to do that and uh, I would send you to some of them. You can email me if you have questions, uh, but I, I like the way Rob Cosman sharpens stuff, and I like the way he explains that, so I would go with that. So that more or less covers uh, all of the hand tools that I think, uh, the non-power tools, that are essential uh, to woodworking. Hi everybody, I wanted to say thank you very much for watching, and I have made a, a couple of small changes. Uh, I've decided to take the first video, the first lesson of the 16 week course and break it into eight subsections. When I got done filming it and I got done editing it, it was pretty long. It was about an almost an hour and a half and I thought that was too much for anybody to sit through. So I just broke that down into eight categories, one for each uh, subsection. I'm going to try to post one each day. So one, this one's coming up now and then I'll do one each day until they're all out and then we'll try to go, you know, one video per week after that. Okay, so one other thing is that we talk about a lot of tools in this uh, lesson number one, and I just wanted you to have access or to know what each of these tools are. These are the tools that I use every day in my shop, and I have uh, composed a list of all of these tools and links where they can be bought at the best price, and I'll keep a list of that or a copy of that in the description. I'll also have the list in a downloadable, like a PDF format, which I'll put up on my website. Uh, that's 
for anybody to download who's interested in having a copy of that. Once again, I want to say thank you for watching. I hope you found some valuable information in this. I know going through all of the, the tools can be a little bit tedious, but uh, the course should definitely pick up and get a lot more exciting uh, once we get into that. So thanks again, and we'll see you next video.